All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores. I still can't believe it's real that we actually have Jaden Daniels as our franchise quarterback. I'm so excited. But most importantly, are the Washington Commanders potentially trading for 49ers wide receiver Brandon Ayuk? We've already seen all of the reports about him potentially wanting to get up out of there because they don't want to pay him. The Commanders do have the second most cap space in the NFL. Also, Brandon Ayuk was on FaceTime, well, technically Instagram Live with Jaden Daniels just an hour ago, shortly after the draft. Does that mean anything? Jaden Daniels even tweeted some emoji eyeballs. Is that letting us know that, hey, something's going on behind the scenes with Adam Peters and his ex team, the 49ers? If there were any GM that the 49ers would at the very least be a little okay with trading Brandon Ayuk to, especially in the NFC, the same conference. It's the commanders because of Adam Peters and this great relationship with John Lynch and those guys over there. And then most importantly, the majority of this video is going to be us breaking down the best player available for the Washington commanders day two of the 2024 NFL draft rounds two and three. We're going to take a look at all of the best players available, but more specifically, the best players available at positions that we need the most tackle wide receiver, linebacker, DB, all of that. But before we dive into everything, make sure you still follow on that like button, still follow on the subscription button, still follow on the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned for all of the content. Follow me on all of the social medias, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of those, man. Really appreciate y'all for all of the love and support and all of the activity, the debates, everything that we had in the round one live stream. Of course, we're about to go right back in it with this round two and three live stream on friday as in by the time y'all are watching this technically today because we have five picks man two second round picks and three thirds we're about to be even more active today as in friday with these rounds two and three than we even were the first day so i'm super excited man make sure y'all pull up for the live stream because i'm breaking down and analyzing every pick in the draft not even just the commanders because i'm a big draft guy a lot of these guys that are going to other teams are guys that i even i've been watching them since high school because i'm into recruiting heavily through my georgia bulldogs and just really college football in general so i have y'all covered for every pick of the draft even outside of the commanders but commander specifically having five picks tomorrow alone is about to be a lot of fun man we could bring in a lot of potential strong contributors or even starters in those rounds but instead of wasting more of y'all time let's go ahead and get to it man let's get it adam adam All right, so let's go ahead and get this out the way so we can spend the majority of this video breaking down the best players available and all of the positions of need that the Washington Commanders have right now. So let's go ahead and talk about it first. Should the Washington Commanders go ahead and trade for Brandon Ayuk? Or more importantly, does it look like we actually are on the way to trade for Brandon Ayuk? That Ricky Pearsall pick was very interesting. He's a bigger receiver. It'd be different. Maybe we could look at it slightly differently if they went after like a Lad McConkey or something like that. Or maybe if they drafted another small receiver shiftier guy maybe like a roman wilson like a slot guy but the fact that they went after the big and tall ricky Purcell, the guy that's a contested catch guy pretty similar to brandon Ayuk. i'm not saying that he's automatically going to, going to be better than brandon Ayuk and a good replacement for him immediately but i do think that ricky is pretty underrated and i feel like they purposely went to get him for that reason i feel like they feel like brandon Ayuk is already on the way out the door and what better way to replace him than when a guy like ricky go ahead and get ahead of it before you even trade brandon Ayuk. and if you can somehow figure things out with them great now you have two good receivers that can go up and make contested catches but also if most importantly if you potentially plan on trading brandon Ayuk, maybe there's something already going on behind the scenes whether it's the commanders or another team it does look more likely that brandon Ayuk is going to be traded out of the 49ers especially Especially after them picking the wide receiver from Florida, Ricky, right there. But then, of course, there's already the strong connections we have to Brandon Ayuk and the 49ers. Through Brandon Ayuk, Jaden Daniels, he was college teammates with Brandon Ayuk back at Arizona State. They're great friends. Literally, I've seen reports that they're still like best friends and talk to each other all of the time. And then, again, like I explained before the intro video, 
if there were any GM out there that the 49ers would be comfortable with trading a Brandon Ayuk to, it's Adam Peters because he's the GM that has the best relationship with all of those guys in the 49ers building right now, most notably John Lynch, because he was just their assistant general manager for many years. And he's the guy that literally gets the credit for drafting guys like George Kittle, for drafting guys like Tyler Noah Hafanga, Dre Greenlaw, so many of their really good really talented players especially the mid to late round draft guys all of the credit is given to adam peters even by john lynch himself so maybe just as a okay as a thank you we will be willing to trade you brandon Ayuk. of course we're not going to give them to you for pennies but just as a like hey man here's a parting gift here's your welcome to being a general manager gift from us here's brandon Ayuk for potentially a 36th overall pick and then even on top of all of that and Apparently, it's been reported that the 49ers do want a first round pick for him, but the first round has already happened. The best you could do is 33rd overall right now from, I believe the Bills have it after they traded back a little bit with the Panthers, just one spot. So that's the best you can do. Now, the Bills do need a wide receiver. So right now, if the Bills wanted to give up that 33rd overall pick, that's probably the highest value the 49ers can get right now. But we're not far away. We're 36th. And if we really want them, I believe we can get them. I believe right now, again, since the first round has already happened, asking for a next year's first round pick is probably even slightly less valuable than this year's 36th round, um, overall pick in the second round. You never know, just depending on how teams look at it. But on top of all of that, shortly after the draft, literally at 11.58 p.m., Jada Daniels tweeted two eyeball emojis like, uh-oh, uh-oh, watch out. So... Of course, everybody's reading into that. That sounds like maybe they're going to go get his best friend. And then on top of that, immediately after the draft, Brandon Ayuk was on live with Jaden Daniels on Instagram. It was reported by Jacina Anderson. Everybody was like, wait a minute, what is going on? What is happening here? There was even a point in the live stream where soon after Braden, um, Jaden Daniels got drafted by the Washington Commanders, Brandon Ayuk approved of it by saying W in the live chat. So there we go. It looks like Brandon Ayuk wants to come to the Commanders. Of course, the Commanders would love to have him. Of course, Jaden Daniels would love to have him. Adam Peters himself, who you can argue was literally the guy that drafted him to the 49ers, he would love to have him as well. But we got to see it takes two to tango. We'll see if it happens. So even if we do miss out on Brandon Ayuk, potentially, even though I don't know, there seems to be some smoke there. Maybe we go after T Higgins instead, because you could probably get him for slightly less value than what you would have to give up for Brandon Ayuk. And again, the commanders do have the second most cap space in the NFL. So if the problem is T Higgins wants money, if the problem is Brandon Ayuk wants money, what team has the better chance to pay them than the Washington commanders? Literally other than just the Patriots right now. But just in case if we don't go and trade for Brandon Ayuk or T. Higgins with our 36th or 40th overall picks for one of those two great receivers, the best receivers available are A.D. Mitchell, coming most recently out of Texas, but technically from Georgia. That's my dog right there. I forever love A.D. Mitchell, man. I forever respect and love him. I would love to get him, most notably because – not only do the Washington Commanders need a receiver, but we specifically need a big, tall receiver. And Xavier Leggett's already gone. Ricky's already gone to the 49ers, which is also added fuel to these rumors. Keon Coleman from Florida State is available. And then, of course, you also have my dog, Lad McConkey. Now, we already do have a bunch of shifty, great route running, fast, quick guys. But you can't go wrong by adding Lad McConkey to any receiver room out there. But I just feel like fit for what we need the most. I think A.D. Mitchell and Keon Coleman make the most sense in between. Between the two i would definitely prefer ad mitchell even though there's reports coming out that apparently there's some character concerns there and that's why he made it outside of the first round we'll see you also have troy franklin from oregon he's six foot two brendan rice from usc he's six foot two i heard that there was strong interest from the commanders in on roman wilson maybe they go ahead and take him 36th overall and maybe 40th overall like i predicted in my predictive mock draft that i did thursday morning before the actual real live mock draft and then one of my favorite players left out of this entire draft regardless of position malachi corley is still out there as well and even though he's five foot eleven he's 207 pounds plays huge literally plays like a debo samuel type of guy so maybe you want to get him and you can probably more than likely get him sometime in the third round whereas roman wilson lad mcconkey ad mitchell or keon coleman you're gonna have to get them 36th overall at worst 
40th overall just to let you know and i'm gonna trust adam peters until i shouldn't i'm gonna give these guys the benefit of the doubt but boy what is going on with this tackle position right now but again i'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt this guy found all pros and pro bowlers in pretty much every round possible of the draft for the 49ers just as of a couple of years ago a few years ago last year and things like that he's been doing this he's very consistent at that so we got to give him the benefit of the doubt i'm expecting him to work his magic here just like he did for the 49ers but i do strongly disagree with not trading up for marius mims to be a franchise left tackle but again i'm gonna let him cook because this guy has found again all pros in the third round fourth round fifth round sixth round and even the seventh round finding pro bowlers in every round possible of the draft so again i'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and also another reason to kind of let up on adam peters right now because i know a lot of people are we love the Jaden daniels pick but we are upset that we didn't trade up for one of the elite tackles in the draft we're starting to question it but on top of everything else on top of the fact that you just need to give him the benefit of the doubt he's cooked this far why just assume he won't find a way to do it as well again but also it's being reported by multiple sources that adam peters really tried to trade up into the first round so it's not like they didn't try to trade up for a tackle and i'm even seeing a report that specifically said that we tried to trade all the way up to the late teens and i'm assuming if we tried to trade up that high we people were probably asking for way too much and trying to take advantage of how desperate we were to get a left tackle and adam peters probably wasn't going for it like yeah we need left tackle but you're not about to take advantage of me and so then as we started to get into the 20s maybe the guy that we really wanted to trade up for originally probably we probably was already gone because guyton was still available well into the 20s so that shows that they didn't really like guyton as much as i thought they would so that personally tells me that they probably wanted amarius mims as bad as i did they brought it they i mean they even brought him in for a top 30 visit and everything and i'm guessing that after he was gone after the Bengals took him they just didn't find it worth it to trade up for any other tackle and they're basically just cool with waiting until whatever remaining tackles make it to one of our early second round picks or maybe even the third round it just looks like if you're putting all of the clues together it looks like if we're hearing reports that they tried to trade up into the teens for a guy you already knew olu fashionu was going to be gone well before then amarius mims literally went i believe what 20th overall exactly they probably tried to trade right in front of the Bengals to get him and apparently the teams ahead of the Bengals were asking for too much so it sounds like they really wanted to do it they weren't able to so do not get too angry at adam peters again let him cook so maybe we can go after the best player available at 36 which i'm pretty sure for sure is not a tackle at this point none of the tackles remaining in my opinion are worth getting at 36 or even 40 really and then maybe we can take like a high ceiling guy in with one of those third round picks i'm guessing and then you can also maybe sign all pro but injury prone david bakhtiari as a free agent to a very incentive based contract like the jets did with tyron smith so all of the tackles that are remaining you have blake fisher i wouldn't take them in the second round i'm not the high on them you have roger rosengarden from washington Eh, same thing kingsley saw mataya from byu and eh. matt gonclaves christian jones dominic Pooney, who i'm a big fan of but second round no thing especially as early in the second round as we are javon foster karan Amagaji, I hope that's how you pronounce that. The Yale tackle, that's going to be the last time I do that. I'm just going to keep saying Karan until I get that name down. Probably in another video. You have Caden Wallace. You have Patrick Paul. You, I mean, we have some guys. I believe that's Chris Paul's brother who is already currently on the Washington Commanders roster as a left guard right now. You have Isaiah Adams. You have some talent out there. But are any of these guys worth going in the second round i don't necessarily believe so you also have anam dankwa who i believe from howard will go like at early sixth round more than likely seventh so right now as far as tackles go i think you just wait until third round at the soonest one of those third round picks i don't think 36 or 40 if you take any of those guys so out of all of those top guys available too that i just listed the only guys that visited that had top 30 visits with the washington commanders were roger rosengarden Caden wallace and keyron from yale 
Now, again, like I mentioned, the guy that I think at earliest goes sixth round, Amin Dankwa, we had dinner with him. So there's some strong interest there. But again, that doesn't concern what we're discussing in this video as far as the second and third round goes. He's more of a sixth round, seventh round, maybe an undrafted free agent. We'll see. He has loads of talent and a high ceiling. Maybe you just take somebody like that and we keep it pushing. Hope David Bakhtari can stay healthy long enough until that high ceiling guy is ready. If you ask me, with all of my favorite tackles already gone, I would just definitely wait until the third round to take a high ceiling boomer bust type of guy again like Kieran from Yale but that's just me I don't feel like any of these tackles remaining are worth the 36th overall pick and maybe not even the 40th and so don't force it don't reach on a tackle because we need one in the worst way it's our biggest need right now but still don't reach just take the best player available and bank on traits and coaching that you, you pay these coaches millions of dollars to do and Again, when in doubt, I like Cornelius Lucas, but I prefer him as a backup swing tackle. So go out there and get David Bakhtiari to an extremely incentive-based deal and just hope that he stays healthy long enough until somebody with a high ceiling like Kieran is ready to step in and start for you. Who would not? I don't think any of these guys that are available right now are ready to start week one. So at this point, you might as well just shoot for the guy with the highest ceiling and hopefully get a guy in for agency like David Bakhtari, hope he stays healthy and sign him to a really cheap incentive-based deal and just see what happens, basically. Now, moving on, there's a lot of great corners left, dog. I thought Cooper DeJean was a first-round pick. I, and he's interesting, though, because is he a corner? Is he a safety? I don't know. Either way, he could ball out no matter where you want to put him. Just get him. Kool-Aid McKinstry, really good. I thought first-round talent coming out of Alabama at corner. I'm still there. Ennis Rackshaw Jr., from Missouri, still available as well. My dog, Kamari Lasseter, I still don't understand how people don't see him as a first round talent. He's literally the best corner Georgia has ever had in this Kirby Smart era. I love him. I already miss him right now. So he's out there, TJ Tampa. You have Max Melton. Cam Hart is probably a guy that the commanders may target with one of our earlier third round picks. You have Kyrie Jackson. You have Andrew Phillips. You have a lot of guys out there. Elijah Jones. Just keep in mind, Elijah Jones and Cam Hart came in for top 30 visits with the Washington commanders. So we're probably just based on those names targeting corner in the early third round. So be on the lookout for one of those third round picks to be used on corner. But then again, you just didn't really expect Cooper DeGene or DeJean, however you pronounce it, or Kool-Aid McKinstry to be available 36th overall and if they are we may go ahead and swing on that or maybe even a Kamari Laster and then wide receiver wise again if we just skip out on the whole Brandon Ayuk or T Higgins trade situation you have A.D. Mitchell, Lab McConkey, Keon Coleman so many options there Roman Wilson I could keep going on and on and on it just depends on what round we're talking when we're talking 36th overall pick or 40th overall pick we're really in my opinion only talking about A.D. Mitchell, Lab McConkey, Keon Coleman and Roman Wilson everybody else I would probably wait until the third round to get all really good receivers but that's just my opinion and then linebacker wise you have Edgerin Cooper you have Junior Colson I'm a big fan of he's my linebacker too you have Peyton Wilson he's my linebacker one I would love to take either of those guys those two guys Edgerin Cooper is cool too has a high ceiling but I just feel like Peyton Wilson and Junior Colson I would be willing to take either one of those guys 36th or 40th overall but you may be able to sneak them in at 40th, maybe even like a Junior Colson with our first third round pick. You never know. So maybe value wise, maybe you wait until then, especially since we already have a really good linebacker group. But if you can somehow find a way to walk away with this draft in this draft with Peyton Wilson, a Junior Colson, you're setting your linebacker up for greatness for the very far future. Um, I would be super excited about that. So please find a way to get one of those guys. Of course, you have Jeremiah Trotter Jr. as well. But I would, I'm not as big of a fan of him as a lot of people are out there. I would wait till one of our maybe our second or our third round pick for him but Tyrese Knight out of UTEP that's the guy that came in for a top 30 visit maybe they target him going into like the fifth round or something like that we'll see but again we're trying to focus purely on day two rounds two and three of the draft but that is an interesting name that's still out there that the commanders clearly have interest in then edge rusher wise you still have my doll Jayless Hutt out there from Houston Christian I see him as potentially being one of our third round picks probably our last third round pick 100th overall we traded Chase Young away an edge rusher for that pick we can use that pick on an edge rusher replacement and Jalex Hunt very high ceiling again I 
comp them to Robert Mathis. Stay tuned for that. You have Marshawn Nealon potentially there. If you really want to get him at 36th or 40th overall, that's probably the time you got to do it. I wouldn't suggest it, but maybe you would. Chris Braswell from Alabama. You have Adiza Isaac from Penn State. Yeah, Chop Robinson has the highest ceiling, but Adiza is the one that was more productive and has the higher floor. He doesn't have the ceiling of a Chop Robinson, but the floor is definitely there. If you want a dependable guy, you can go get him. Even though that may not be necessary, we brought in all of these free agents at edge rusher. Why not go ceiling for edge rusher? Why just get another safe guy when we already have all of these safe veterans that we brought in that we know can start and be a part of a heavy rotation. We don't need to draft an edge rusher that can contribute immediately today necessarily if we don't want to. And then safety-wise, Georgia Bulldog Javon Bullard to me is easily the best safety available. But do we care about safety enough? Do we have that big of a need to take safety this early, 36th or 48th overall? I highly doubt it. And I think at earliest, any of these safeties available, you would take them with that 40th overall pick, not the 36. You have Tyler Newbin still out there, Jaden Hicks, Cole Bishop, my other Georgia Bulldog, Tyke Smith, Cameron Kitchens from Miami. I don't think any of those guys are really even worth the 36th overall pick. And at the earliest, maybe the 40th overall pick, some eyes, some guys to keep your eyes on, but I doubt it. Then tight end wise, uh-huh. Jatavion Sanders is still out there. Maybe you got to take him 36th or 40th overall. I wouldn't because I just like so many tight ends in this draft between Cade Stover, Ben Sanat, Jared Wiley, Theo Johnson. I like all of those tight ends. Eric All. I like all of those tight ends potentially for the Washington Commanders, but those are all later round guys. I wouldn't spend a second round pick or any of those guys, even including Jatavion Sanders or Jared Wiley or even Ben Sanat. I would wait till the third round to see which of those guys are still available that late. And at that point, just go ahead and take them. But I wouldn't take either of those guys in the second round. So if we try to narrow it down, which positions are we truly really targeting in the second round? I'm thinking it's more than likely a wide receiver or a corner. Because if we're just looking at value-wise or linebacker, maybe, maybe linebacker, because just value-wise, those are the best players available right now. Yeah, tackle is our biggest need, but I don't think there's any tackle out there worth taking in the second round. We might as well wait to the third round to see who's still the best guys available at the tackle position there. As of right now, I think linebacker, corner, or receiver between those three positions are going to be your two picks in the second round. Could be wrong, but that is my educated guess at those positions. And also... I'm going to keep speaking it into existence, but every time I do any type of draft video about what we should do next, the next day or whatever, anything like that, when I preview rounds four and five after Friday night, I'm going to keep bringing up Justin Simmons. Let's go ahead and sign all pro safety Justin Simmons afterwards. I already talked about it in my mock draft the morning before the draft, Thursday morning. I did a whole breakdown as to why Justin Simmons it not only makes a lot of sense for the Washington Commanders, but why he's destined to sign with the Washington Commanders as well. So let's make that happen after the draft. Let's get it. Don't even worry about safety because we can go and get an all-pro safety veteran guy that can come in and fit perfectly in the defense that Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr. want to deploy and immediately make our defense way better. We're going to have a top five defense in the NFL. You find a way to get Justin Simmons. And again, like I already explained, go check out my mock draft. At the end of it, I do a full breakdown as to why it makes too much sense. Make sure y'all make that happen. So again, just to recap, second round wise, if you're wondering what positions I think we're most likely to take, just simply because there's just so much elite talent still there, so much first round talent, arguably, you can say wide receiver, cornerback, maybe we can start the look at linebacker maybe edge rusher but i highly doubt tackle even though we need tackle again i want to reiterate it's the biggest need we have on this team to me by far right now but no tackle is worth taking in the second round right now to be completely honest from my opinion so we'll see how that goes but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in the video please stiff arm that like button stiff arm the subscription button stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you stay tuned for all of the content i really appreciate y'all like i already said i will be live streaming rounds two and three as well and i will do video breakdowns on every pick that we get and on top of that i'm gonna do film sessions for every 
draft pick that the Washington Commanders select as well. So for every single person the Commanders draft, no matter how many, I will be doing a video breakdown like I did so far with Jaden Daniels, weaknesses, strengths, team fits, comps, just a full breakdown analysis of the guy, top to bottom. And then I'm gonna do a film session for each of those guys as well. So every single player we draft, you're going to get at least two videos of those guys, a breakdown in a film session. And then some guys like Jaden Daniels is going to get more than one film session. And even some undrafted free agents that they're very notable. I may even do a an individual breakdown and maybe even a film session for those guys as well. So stay tuned. I'm going to keep y'all updated. I'm your one-stop shop for everything commanders. And again, I will be live streaming the entire draft Friday night, day two, rounds two and three. We have five picks there. So I'm super excited. We have the f with the fourth pick in the second round and the very last pick in the third round so we're literally going to be live streaming the entire night because we're going to be making picks from all the way from the beginning all the way to literally the very last pick of the third round so i'm excited make sure y'all stay tuned let me know in the comment section how you feel about everything discussed in this video which prospects do you want the most in day two and more specifically which prospects are you looking at for the second round 36 to 40th overall do you think there's a chance that maybe we trade back for one of those picks to get more third round picks instead let me know how you feel about everything make all of your day two predictions right now let this comment section kind of be a place where you can come back and say hey i predicted that before it happened type of thing let this be the place for that so let me know in the comment section how you feel about all of that and of course let me know how you feel about a potential bread and iu trade as well do you think it's in the works in the background let me know how you would feel about that if it were to happen all of that i really appreciate y'all i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out